project we're working on right now is uh, a maritime archaeology class that has um, taken on the theme of African American and Gullah Geechee maritime history. We look at five different sites throughout the course of the semester. The Wormslow Long Island, um, that is going to help us tell the story of uh, say the freedmen who worked out there briefly and then after it was taken away from the freedmen and given back to the family there was African Americans who were contracted to, to live on that island farm so those stories that we're going to gather will be handed over to the park and to the state so they can educate the public about that. It's, it's an area of Savannah and Georgia's history that hasn't been documented enough. Part of my role uh, as as the archaeologist and his, you know and basically um, part of doing historical archaeology is trying to understand how humans have lived and occupied on the landscape over over time. These are not isolated enclaves or communities as you go up and down the coast. These 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 people may have been isolated from the white dominant culture, but that's you know that's that's. They interacted economically, socially, in some form or fashion, but they also inter interacted amongst their own communities. All African Americans in America have some linkages to the Gullah Geechee community because this is where we came in. What I want the African American community to know across the nation in America is that they are all Gullah Geechee. The, in, the indigenous people that are connected here have connections with indigenous people all over the nation. Gullah Geechee people the same. All of the enslaved started in the south. And the archaeology that we're doing, sort of scouting out what's left, uh, what artifacts uh, can help us tell the story, that's being done in partnership with members of the descendant community. A lot of these sites we're working on, we don't know a lot about the historical background. The students research and their field work is actually making an original contribution that hasn't been done before. So our objective for the day is to record features, uh, man-made features on Long Island, which is part of Wormslow State Historic Site. They've never been mapped before. Uh, the documentary evidence is light so we really don't know a lot about activities. Uh, if we saw anything that was of interest, we would flag it, take pictures of it, um, and then use a measurement um, tool and whiteboard to determine what the object was and where we found it. So they said that they had um, evidence that there had been Gullah living out on that island. Um, we actually found what we think was a home site. We found a few scattered bricks. So this GPS sensor talks to numerous satellites, um, as many as 30, I think, to 50, um, to get a very accurate um, indication of where we are on the Earth within one meter. Normally, if you say, where am I, to your phone, it tells you where, just wherever your phone is. This is now using this as its source for where it is, so it doesn't care where the phone is. It's where we move this thing that it's reading. So we, we put this where we want to indicate a point, or in the case of um, what Ozzy just did was they moved it all the way around the pond, taking taking uh, data data points. points. Yeah, and so that created a map, an area map of that pond. This thing will give us area maps. It'll give us lines or just individual points. So today we're going to be shooting a lot of this, and then all that can be exported out to maps that we can then provide to the park for their future planning. We think that those ponds and those ditches that we found could be something that they used to farm. So finding that means that we could find out more about their lifestyle and potentially what they ate, potentially how they lived their days, which is important for people of that community and their descendants. I mean, I just have really enjoyed this experience. Um, I think it's different from all the other classes I've taken and I feel um, extremely lucky to have selected this class. Dr. Norrell has been an incredible professor. It's just been fun to learn about the community that I've always lived in, in a different way. We can use the history of those landscapes, those stories, to hook people into not only a particular refuge, but also to get them excited about the kind of work, conservation work that we do. It's important that we preserve and at least 
uh, tell the story as best we can. And sometimes if there's a lack of documentation, archaeology is one way where you can uh, get that information, combine it with the documentary sources, because we are historians as well, and then tell that story with the two sets together. As a master storyteller, one of the things I know is that if you don't tell your story, someone is going to make up a story about you.